the Holman transfer is achieved by performing then this thruster burn, it's instantaneous, at R1 to do the delta V1 change. And that puts us on this uh, elliptic orbit uh, that has a periapsis speed now. And by the way, this is the generic term. If you don't know what planet you're in orbit around, or if you're writing sort of a textbook, you might call it just periapsis to be general. Of course, you know for the Earth, this is called perigee. And when I worked on the Galileo project, uh, we had perigeove. So it will have this speed of V1 plus the delta V1 that you gave. This is unknown because we don't know how much delta V1 we need to add yet. The V1 we know because that's the circular speed. When we get up to the apoapsis, which is the generic term for the furthest point in the orbit, which at the Earth is called ap <coughs> apogee, and in the Galileo project we called it <coughs> apogee, we have a speed, we'll write it as VA or V2. This is also unknown, but we'll have to be solved for eventually. And as I said, we do know the speed of the circular orbit at the final orbit radius to be the square root of mu over r2. It's the v2 plus the delta v2. But we don't know these values individually. We just know what the sum has to be. So note that when the apoapsis is reached, or apogee, a delta v, a change of velocity, must be performed to circularize the orbit at r2. Otherwise, you fall back down to where you came from. So our problem is to find delta V1 and delta V2. We have two unknowns. That means we need two independent equations to solve them. And fortunately, this problem can be solved by determining the transfer orbit, the elliptic transfer orbit we talked about. And to do, to do this, we use two equations corresponding to the conservation of angular momentum and secondly, the conservation of total mechanical energy. This is because we are in a conservative gravitational field of the Earth. <clears throat> so conservation of angular momentum, uh, and in more general terms, the angular momentum is R cross MV, okay, sometimes written as H, because R and V are, are perpendicular to each other, we have uh, R times V as a scalar quantity. This is the speed uh, at uh, perigee after the delta V has been done. Here's the radius of perigee. That hasn't changed. Uh, notice that we could have a mass in here on both sides, but it's the same value and it's constant, so we, we, we uh, strike it out. And so, in fact, this is called the conservation of specific angular momentum because we divided out the mass. Usually, you don't need to know the mass <coughs> in orbital mechanics calculations like this. Now, we can write in a, on, at apogee, the angular momentum is R2 times V2. So, I'm going to go back and refer to our pictures so that. You know, down here we have R1 times uh, V1 plus the quantity V1 plus delta V1. That's the uh, specific angular momentum at this point. When we get up here, we have a velocity of the elliptic orbit of V2 times R2. Those have to be equal because the angular momentum is conserved. So we have this equality, and then we can divide the R2 to the other side and get V2. So we have an equation for V2 in terms of V1 plus delta V1. So we'll use that equation in the conservation of energy. <coughs> the conservation of, to be more precise, specific energy, because we also canceled out the mass here. Uh, before we write it that way, let me just say that in general, conservation of energy, 
of total mechanical energy is one half m v squared plus the potential energy, which can be a function of r, equals a constant. And uh, we, uh, <clears throat> it turns out that the potential energy of an orbit is minus mu over r. There's a negative sign involved in orbital mechanics. So this may be confusing at first, but it's just a function, and as r gets larger, this number becomes smaller. As r gets small, this becomes, uh, <coughs> um, <coughs> I should say, as r gets uh, larger, this value gets closer to zero, approaching from below. As r gets smaller, this number becomes bigger in magnitude, but it's negative, and so it becomes lower and lower. And in fact, usually, when you add these two numbers together, this number is usually less than zero. In fact, that's for elliptic and circular orbits. When the velocity is high enough, such that this is greater than zero, you are in escape. So greater than or equal to zero for the total energy implies escape. And it could be a parabolic or hyperbolic orbit. And so just simply knowing whether your total energy is greater than or less than zero, you know whether you are in a capture orbit about the planet. So taking the um, specific energy to be this equation, uh, one half v squared plus the potential energy minus mu over r1 is one half v squared at the other point uh, plus the potential energy of minus mu over r2. So we have the energy at periapsis, the specific energy, and the ener specific energy at apoapsis. These must be equal. So we'll use that equality to solve our problem. We substitute for v2 uh, into uh, equation uh, e. We take this value and put it in here. Then that gives us, on the right-hand side, um, let's just look at that equation briefly. We're substituting this. So it's just V1 plus delta V1 and R1 over R2 is plugged in. So when you do that, you get R1 over R2 squared and V1 plus delta V1 squared. 